Today, Precarious plays Torment, Tides of Numenera. Hi, I want to talk to this fella. Hello. Can you read, then can you narrate this one and I'll do the voice? Yes. Segments of this bisected construct's legs lie scattered around it. Someone has painstakingly altered these pieces, giving them small limbs and tiny metallic heads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nonetheless, they aren't moving. The larger construct's turquoise eyes flicker out of sync with each other as they turn towards you. As with the other construct, you feel the bubbling sensation in your mind. The construct's thoughts are likewise unreadable. Is it because you put the changing god put tinfoil hats on all of them in the past? Do you think that's why we can't read their thoughts? I mean, maybe. I do not understand. It says, the voice emerging from the grill around its eyes is soft, as though you are hearing it from far away. Don't they want to live? The viaducts are open. The commands are received, and yet... Its eye lights flutter. Every time I give my children life, they die. Oh. <sighs> These tiny things are your children? Not anymore. It says. Now they are inanimate and lifeless. Their adaptive personalities have been lost. I do not understand why they are dying. I have given the subject of procreation a great deal of thought over the last century, and there are no errors in my calculations. My assistant, Tarnish, built my children's bodies to my precise specifications. Their intelligence reservoirs are shielded against permanent loss. Its eyes look away from yours as if embarrassed. And I want them to live. That should be enough. Oh. This is this is yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> Do you know where we are and what we've been doing? Look Pay at attention. that ladder. Look at that ladder. See, hold on. <laughs> I, I just want to. I'm going to point out number three mm -hmm. feels like that feels like a they included a real tabletop faux pas in the game, which feels so weird to me, mm -hmm. you know? Because no one that would is living in this environment, in this scenario, would think, that's stupid, <laughs> you're stupid. You know, that feels like something that somebody that just spent all of their day working at Costco and they're exhausted and they're not really, like they just wanna hang out with their friends and they're not really, Doing like they're not bringing like their role playing a game. They're not bringing their yes and. They're bringing their no, but no. Machines are never alive in my world, and so they can't be here. That's dumb, you I, know. Yeah. It, and it's like, I I don't know why you would. It seems weird to write that in for this character. It does as a, as it, a potentiality. If I ever play this game again, I might pick all the answers that seem like. Uh, unsporting. <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. I mean, like, it's not a toaster, you guys. <laughs> it's it's something else. <laughs> and you look to the left and it's like, is it streaming energy into the planet's core? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So is that, what's, is that what's keeping the gravity on? I know, I know. Okay, so I do, I, I wish I could help you in some way. It may be that you can. It says. I have performed some new calculations, and a new direction has presented itself. Okay. I don't want to have sex with this robot. Sex robot. <laughs> sex robot. My children need more energy to the... Uh-oh. But my con construction prevents me from transfers above a certain threshold, and for good reason. Its pupils rotate, contracting... Energy transfers above a certain percentage would lead to a chain of ruptures in my intelligence rings. I would die. Its voice mesh clicks. Help me force myself to make this transfer, for I cannot do it myself. Oh boy, I don't know if this is a first conversation activity. Click. Help me give my life to my children. That's really sweet. 
Well, I, I, so the overarching story seems to be about parenting. Mm-hmm. And the changing god is a garbage parent. And this is sort of like... This, to me, feels like the end game of A plus parenting, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, in a, in a, this is, this is a fairy tale, right? It's a, yeah. it's a metaphor. Yeah. So a parent being willing to sacrifice everything for their children, it's like, yeah, yeah, you should be prepared to do that. That's like the point. You're mm -hmm. cloning yourself. Yeah. Functionally. Like that throwing yourself into the future. That that's the that's the end goal. And parents that don't recognize that, like at all, they don't have any awareness of that, are usually the absolute worst kind of parent and person, you know? Anyway. What it asks sounds difficult, she murmurs, tapping her chin. Difficult, but not impossible. The order of truth may be able to help us accomplish what it wants. Will you help me? The foreman says, the words are almost buried beneath a crackling surge of static. Uh... I don't want to help you kill yourself, but I don't want to make this decision right now. I'd like to go talk to your brothers, but that's not on the table. Um... I don't mind helping this, like... I mean, it's been thousands of Several thousands of years, years right? of Yeah, I mean, ideally... Because... So, like I was saying before, it works as a metaphor. In an ideal scenario, we, it would not be necessary. It feels a little... The reason why I say it's a fairy tale is because it has, like, very strict criteria for its existence. Yeah. A better solution would just be like, no, we'll figure out a way to help you and then also help these... These, uh, these Little progenies, creatures. these offspring, yeah. Yeah, I don't feel... I, I feel like I need more information, but without any more information, I do want to help. Yeah. I don't want this. I do want this. We're going to go with do, because... Well, there's always the ultimate out as players of a game where we just never come back. We can just say, yeah, sure, we'll help, and then if the next quest objective is level pistol fire into back of head we just don't interact with the quest anymore yeah you know well we'll see okay i want to start with yes new friend i will help you whatever that is speak to tarnish my assistant he may be able to help you understand how i function if he is feeling well enough okay uh i can I examine you? Do we have any technical know-how? Uh, I think th like our character knows ciphers. Yes. It says... Tarnish, open my preservation hatches and viaduct shields, please. The elderly workman shuffles over and does as he's asked. Oh my. Khalij says beside you. I don't claim to understand everything I'm seeing here, but you'll need an extra set of hands if you're planning to do what the poor creature wants. She smiles. I have hands to spare, of course. Crippled Foreman says you've never seen technology... Does he say that? No. No. You've never... Uh, uh, was I narrating? No, I, I was. You're right. You've never seen technology like this. Wires pass through glass tubes, threaded with pale light and star-speckled darkness. You glance over at Tarnish. He's looking away, arms crossed, as though unwilling to watch a stranger tinker with his master. An amnesis. The vision falls on you like a wave swallowing a swimmer. You approach this foreman, still possessed of its legs, and open the same hatches that Tarnish did. I know it looks complex, the foreman says, but the viaducts are the simplest part. The machine spirit, me that is, is trickier. Even I don't fully understand it. It laughs. Me. The vision fades, leaving you standing before the ruins of that once cheerful construct again. Lore, machinery, lore, natural, attempt to bypass the foreman's mind and pass its life to its children. Oh, we can do this right now, huh? Oof. Uh, uh, 
Okay, I think that this is an important question. Uh, do we really need to hear it <laughs> No, I suppose not. If you want to investigate, that's fine, but I think the answer is known. Uh, I just want to hear it. Okay. Okay. Need. The construct says. Not want. Its pupils study the distant ceiling. When I was born, I began working in seconds. I did this until our creator shut down our bodies. In the millennia since, I have focused on designing the infrastructure beneath the other foreman's work and instructing workers on how to execute on these designs. Its pupils fall back to you. Eventually, I realized I was unhappy. Okay. From time to time, my workers brought their children to the manufactory, holding their small hands, <laughs> explaining the mysteries of this place to them. Its pupils flicker off. I can read it. You're the one that can't. It began as a thought. What would I teach to my own children? To be curious, to explore. No! <laughs> I told you that this was a. Uh, we already knew. I'm done. Next part. I want to kill a monster now. <laughs> the foreman's pupils reappear. Yep. They and do. then some stuff happened, and then we used some words. All right. This seems like solid enough reasoning. Before we accidentally kill this thing. Um, we can just say for well from now for now and then come back later maybe after a quick save. Okay, I do want to talk to his buddies before I do this. Fine. Yeah, cuz like if we do a skill check and it fails for any reason, I'm going to have to restart. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna... This one... Master Foreman. You're back! The Frozen Construct says, glaring down at you. We don't train novices here. Why are you here? What do you want? Out with it! Uh, nothing about... the other Foreman in particular. Uh, I think it was out down this tree. Oh, okay. Let's just not read through it. Alright, just click through it. Um. Okay, never mind. Let me check on this one, Master Artisan. Nothing. Nothing. All right. I just want to get this over with. Uh, we should save, right? Yep. Or we could go talk to the order of truth like uh, Calistige recommended yeah I think I should still save though right sure during recording okay okay and to be clear this isn't macho this isn't machismo this isn't like a like a, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna engage with the sappy stuff or anything like that. It's just I'm a really sloppy crier, and I, I can, I become profoundly inarticulate. You're also kind of a sloppy laugher. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You, you fall down. Oh yeah. When it, when something is really really hilarious, you lack the the scaffolding to remain upright. Yeah. You turn into a puddle and it's really I'm like I try not to laugh at it because it only makes it worse, but you collapse a little bit like a souffle. <laughs> <laughs> like a souffle that was startled. There it that is that phenomena is pretty unique to to you. <laughs> I don't I don't think I've encountered many other people who can who can make me a, that's not the order of truth that's the, the that's order? the cult of the changing god we haven't met the order of truth yet oh well do I should I go back to my um little pod yeah let's go back there since uh That's the most obvious 
Mm-hmm. The most obvious one. Oh, they're still executing that guy. Don't they ever finish? It is down here, right? Yeah, you probably need to click further up the stairs. No, that's a, I th I'm almost entirely sure that that's like a quest that they want us to interact with. So that poor sap is probably going to be stuck there mid-execution until we either interact with it or maybe we hit some kind of like chapter division mm -hmm. where it, it shuts its down, where it, uh, it shuts the quest down. Like we hit a point of no return. Mm -hmm. I love this place. It's so weird. I really appreciate some good strange. <clears throat> Inarticulate isn't the right word. Um, unintelligible. That's that's the word. I become unintelligible. Like it's just like <laughs> that's the noise. That's a cartoonified version of the noise that I end up making. <laughs> okay, examine the shards on the ground. Maybe I can pick something up. Pick up one of the crystal shards. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Woo! We have a crystalline shard. Show more. Step away. Back upstairs. It said we could use it as a weapon, but... Well, if I need a spare knife, I'll come down here again. I love these things. Like, what is that? Ah, oh, cube. Oh, nervous cube. Nervous cube. The nervous cube is nervous. What's it nervous about? Nobody knows. Is it really nervous or excited? Nobody knows. I do appreciate the strange. Which I've already said. This looks a little like a cat's mouth, but I can't show you why now. Have you ever seen that picture of dog noses? In the dark? What? I know that that sounds weird, but no, it's No, like, real I, I thing. was not paying attention to what you said. <laughs> I said, have you ever seen that picture of dog noses in the dark? No. It makes them look like aliens. Cool. It's real, like, just the nose? Just the nose. Just the nose. And, like, it's I got can... a bright flash on the front of it. Yeah. And they look like little alien faces. Uh-huh. It's creepy. Okay. Have I ruined your day? No. <laughs> and the game didn't ruin my day either. Oh, wait, no. Foreman, not artisan. All right. Let's talk business again. Wait. No, that's right. You got it. Let's talk about the broken device in the reef again. Yes, go on. Um, Number two. Yes. Hmm. It says, scanning the shard. Micro fissures saturated with organic fluid. This device of yours is alive. Replacement crystals need to be grown, not made. The construct eye light swivels from you, leaving you and the shard in the dark. Can't help you more than that. Growing crystals isn't my business, but those ruin, ruin diggers in the order of truth might be able to tell you more. You'll find them in Government Square up the ladder to my left. Good luck. Oh, that's what that ladder's for. Oh, cool. Okay, bye. Let us walk past this very sad eventuality and get upstairs. Get upstairs. A set of floating rungs rises from the floor, leading to a more conventional ladder built into the, into the side of an ancient ship. The ladder disappears into darkness above. Let's go! Ooh! Oh, so outside the context of a fairy tale where it's like everything is really simple and clear cut. Mm hmm. A parent literally sacrificing their lives to give their children a start is a horrible plan because then you just have a bunch of kids wandering around without 
without any help. Without like yeah, a promise of of aid. Mm-hmm. Without any in um an invested agent, an invested actor. A parental guardian. Okay, I really want to talk to everybody in town every time, but what is this? What is that? Oh, I have to touch that. This fountain is constructed of a material that seems halfway between wood and stone. It doesn't contain water, as might be expected. Instead, it's filled with swarming, tiny, fish-like creatures that leap and cavort in wriggling mass, chattering to each other in what sounds like a thousand different tongues. (gasps) Oh! Yes! I'm gonna catch one! No, 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 no. I want to listen first. Yeah. What do you mean, why? What do you mean, why? What a stupid question. (laughs) Why do you stick your fingers in a fountain? Because it's fun. (sighs) Why do you touch a hot stove for the sensation to feel something? You fold your arms, listening intently to the fish jabber at each other. It sounds like a cloud of nonsense syllables mashed into baby speak. Oh, it's a cute sounding fountain. Uh, A few oft-repeated sounds tug at your memory until something unravels. You stand before a rusty intelligence terminal surrounded by crooked ruins. Laying unfamiliar hands against the cracked glass, you speak words in all the languages you know. This takes some time. Oh... The terminal, the terminal awakens at the sound of an ancient guttural greeting. You recognize it immediately as one of the words the fish-like creatures are babbling cheerfully at each other. Ooh, ooh, I know 436 languages. Of them, 422 are dead languages. <laughs> oh, oh, I want to, I really want to catch one of the creatures. Oh, tell me I can. <laughs> w- what if it kills it? What if it kills it to be separated from the the swarm? Well, I won't know unless I try. And it will be very sad. It's your game. Why would it kill it? I supposedly know its language. I know a word. Sure. Okay. Oh my god, you made me scared. I'm leaving it alone. (laughs) No, No, it's... uh, Here's the thing. I think that they might be dick DMs. Yeah. I think that they might be assholes. I think that they might be... uh, I'd like to try to interact with that, and the entire time it was just a, a trap for a sadistic person to be like, something terrible happens to you. Yeah, I mean, that has it, like, been that's, happening emotionally so far. That's the... that's... Hold on, I should rephrase. I don't want to paint with too broad a brush. I think that just statistically speaking, whenever you have a project of this scale, you're going to have a lot of people that... Are, are actually like they, they're tabletop dungeon masters, right? Uh huh. They have their own home games, and just it's, statistically speaking, at least one of them is gonna be a bad dungeon master who they the, the entire purpose of the game for them is introduce something interesting, have that peak interest, right? And then, and then slap. something sadistic happens, yeah, yeah. Oh, this seems like the folks we're looking for. What makes you... Well, the sculptures, but also... Oh, maybe not. I just moused over a yen who knows, and I'm like, that's... Who knows? What do you know? Well... One who knows. Things that I don't, I'm sure. For basically as a guarantee. Um... Okay, I'm gonna go touch the fountain. <laughs> I can't! I'm gonna catch one! Oh. Oh, it's not likely. Okay, I'm not gonna catch one. Yeah, I think. Am I stuck into it now? May, can Calistige. Can Calistige. Calistige should be able to swing this? No! This this shifting multi-dimensional creature is gonna have trouble catching one of these little fish. Yeah, okay. I guess they, as a baseline, they must all be a little clumsy. All right. I do like to imagine that it's only by the grace of having an unlimited number of her helping out that mm-hmm. they managed to get to sixty. <laughs> they maybe they're all just horribly, horribly clumsy. Yeah. All right. 
I'm well, gonna. I mean, we've got the points to burn with either character, so. I'm just gonna let Calistige do it because the idea of. No, I wanna do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Did we do it? Yeah. I caught one. You deftly snatch a single fish from the glistening, tumbling flood. The bubbling mass of remaining creatures squawk together in nonsensical outrage. I gained a jelly. A jelly! Right click for details. Caught this creature from a fountain of sorts in Government Square. Small fish like and constantly squirming. It never requires food or other nourishment, and it gibbers constantly in, in, an, in an indecipherable language. All right. Here's hoping I didn't disrupt an entire ecology on accident. They're very mad. Oh, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you put it back? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Spend more time listening to the creatures. Let's see if they're still angry. The fish-like creatures continue to gibber at a song of melodic sy syllables and broken words. Okay, let's take our ill-gotten gains and... <laughs> I stole a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I stole a fish. I'm Wonderful. looking... Wonderful. Okay, back on track. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a certain group of people who... The are... order of truth. The order of truth. Nobody I've moused over so far seems to be of the order of truth. So I'm going to go out this way. No. There's a whole huge area to the top left that you haven't investigated. Mm, here? I, th there, there's still fog of war right uh, over there. Anything? Anything at all? There's a terminal, which I now have to touch. Oh boy. Power still flows through this ancient machine. A brassy heartbeat pulses within it, just at the edge of hearing, and tiny bubbles orbit the entire structure. No, not bubbles. Holes in space. Yay! Holes in space! <laughs> oh, I love this game. Okay, um, leave it alone. No, look through the orbiting holes in space. Oh, okay. Oh, good. You step too close, and one of the anomalies hisses past your hip like a disc made of razors. One of your pouches feels heavier. It seems the anomaly has left you a present. I got a cyclone cube. That's, what a is A cyclonic that? cube. C cyclonic cube. We're on a nickname basis already, all right? Okay. Hey, C cube. Hey, CC. Light moves strangely through this glass cube, forming square patterns of blue and purple colors. See, we're family, okay? <laughs> Okay. Oh, I'm not going to use... No, don't use the... I don't we think don't you know can. What it does. It's grayed out. Okay. I know what it does. I know what it does. I'm going to leave it alone. No, I'm going to examine it. It converts three-dimensional individuals into two-dimensional squares. This generator combines a huge number of mismatched parts into a functional whole. Once again, you notice the... Circinate symbol etched into the side like a maker's mark. Okay. Bye. This matches the one downstairs. Does it? The other one didn't have well, the other uh, one a was... constellation of black holes around it. It was not working. <laughs> that one probably does when it's working. What does that interesting statue have to say for itself? Carved into the base of the statue are the words, the order of truth. Hold on, I think a dog bark is about to happen. Uh-oh, did I really, uh, we went way, way over anyway. The dog's barking, we went way over. We're done, this is the end. Hello, we're fine.